and uh, today I'm going to talk about Meteor.js. Um, so Meteor is a platform that's built on top of Node that makes making real-time web applications ultra easy. Um, Meteor acts as an intermediary between your app's user interface and your app's server slash database, um, which, and, and as the intermediary, it makes sure that all of the data that's changing on either end is being synced nearly instantaneously. Um, now, an interesting thing about uh, Meteor is that because it uses JavaScript uh, on both the client and the server, a lot of the code that you write for the client can be reused on the server, and a lot of the a lot of the code that you write for the server can be reused on the client. Um, it's really similar to what we've been doing with uh, web apps on the main stack, um, but for better or worse, it abstracts away a lot of the complexity that web development brings. Um, it's not immediately apparent why that can be worse, but as you use it and you develop with it, it becomes clear that you can't customize as much with it. Um, so how's it similar to what we've been learning? So it's similar in that the overall, like the end product is going to be very similar. With Meteor, you can design a single page app that works in the exact same way uh, that a mean app would work, um, albeit it can become, like it's a little bit easier to uh, use to develop like real time uh, updates between your server and your client. Um, with Mean, obviously, you would use sockets. Meteor has that built in. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, another similarity is the use of packages. Uh, with Mean, you create a, when you want to create a Mean app, you create a directory, then you start gro going and grabbing all the node packages, the grunt uh, packages, or the bower packages. Uh, whereas with Meteor, you just install Meteor uh, and you initialize your app as a Meteor application and a lot of the stuff is already done for you. Um, I was actually watching a YouTube video the other night and someone said that the average time to launch a mean app uh, on localhost would be about 15 to 16 minutes, whereas with Meteor it's more about a minute and a half, um, which is a little bit mind-blowing. Uh, so what's its role in the mean stack? Um, I kind of like to think of Meteor as a sibling to mean. Um, and I think a good way to start understanding the differences between them is looking, how, looking at how uh, you get each one set up. So like I was saying, uh, with Node, when you're making a Node app, you go and you grab all the individual packages you know you need, whereas with Meteor, you just initialize a Meteor app. Um, it comes, Meteor comes with Node and NPM packages bundled with it. So a lot of the basic functionality that you might just need immediately is right there, right out of the box. Um, it means uh, the way that Meteor packages are set up actually reduces the overall customizability of uh, your application, um, which can make it a little bit annoying because it feels kind of like a black box uh, that just does a lot of stuff that you need it to do without really understanding how it knows that it needs to do that or why it's doing that. Um, and it really requires a, a deeper dive into Meteor to understand how things are happening. Um, so let's look at the similarities between mean, or continue to look at the similarities between mean and, uh, and Meteor. So obviously with mean, you have your Angular front end, and you have your task runner, which is either uh, grunt or gulp. Uh, Meteor, uh, you, it comes out of the box with um, a, a front end of uh, Blaze, I believe, um, but you can add, um, you can add Angular through the optional, you can add, um, I'm sorry. I went too fast. Um, sorry. Uh, so with MeanApp, you get your Angular front end, you get Grunt or Gulp. Uh, with Meteor, you can add uh, your Angular front end, though it comes with Blaze out of the box. Um, and rather than having Grunt or Gulp as your task runner, it has something called IsoBuild. Um, and IsoBuild does very similar things to Grunt or Gulp, but requires less manipulation and less configuration. It does what you need to do like that. You don't really need to touch it. Um, so the unique features uh, of each, uh, one that we've, we understand Meteor's pretty well, or sorry, means pretty well, um, generators, which are really useful, like we've used Joe's FSG, uh, which makes it very easy to get like a file structure, all the content, or a lot, like a good boilerplate. Um, it also has flexible guts, which means added customizability, again, I don't know if that's a word, uh, and so it, it becomes easier to tweak things. Uh, with Meteor, you get this thing called live query, 
which essentially enables you to have instantaneous syncing between your app's client and your app's backend. Um, another nice thing about Meteor is its uh, deployment process, which is unbelievably painless. I'm going to walk through that in a minute. Um, so another more u things that make Meteor unique, um, the way that you can write code for both the server and the client together, kind of, um, and the fact that it is a full stack application that takes care of, or a full stack platform that takes care of both the front end and the back end. Um, the request versus subscriptions uh, is an interesting uh, differentiator. So normally when you make a request uh, to our mean app, it, you make a request to a URL, the URL hits the, or that request hits the server, and then the server spits back some sort of response. Um, with Meteor, there's a, you, uh, you subscribe to the server, and when there are changes, uh, it's immediately reflected. So if the client uh, changes something that affects the server, the server is immediately changed. If the server changes something that affects how the client looks, the client's immediately changed. Um, so database, you get access to the database on the server and on the client, which is something that we don't really have uh, with a mean app. Um, and it's not actually that different than what you do in Mean. It just abstracts away, like, if you wanted to access some uh, database information on the front end, you would have to make a GET request to some route that would handle looking at the database for you. Um, you use this thing called MiniMongo in Meteor, which is essentially, like, a re-implemented version of MongoDB, but for the front end, um, which essentially handles the same functionality, but makes it easier to use, in my opinion. Um, and finally, something that we've been just talking about all the time, uh, the instantaneous reactivity of when something on the server changes, it changes on the client, and vice versa. Um, so let's walk through a demo of how to make a Meteor app. So the first thing that you do is you, do, you go into the directory that you want to create the app in, and you say Meteor create, and then the name of your application. So for the purposes of this, I just did a demo app. Um, and I actually didn't modify any of the code that it ships with. Um, so it takes about a minute to configure it, and then you can uh, CD right into that folder. Um, and when you CD into the folder, you'll see, I believe, uh, three files and then one hidden directory. You'll see a, a HTML file, a JavaScript file, and a CSS file, um, and then a hidden directory full of uh, the Meteor config stuff, uh, which includes like packages and uh, all that ugly stuff. Um, and so this, the client code and the server code is actually written in one file in the demo that they give you, which is a little mind bending for us who have like very, have put server and client code in very different places. Um, the example that they gave us doesn't really actually rely on any client code. Um, so it doesn't really matter, but I, you can see at the top of the page up there, uh, it's saying if client, so it's checking to see what is accessing this code uh, and will run accordingly. Um, so all this is doing is it's setting a session uh, variable and called counter and initializing it at zero, um, adding an event handler or a click handler um, so that when a button is clicked, it increments that counter, um, and then it creates a template helter, helper um, that will return, when you, when you ask for counter, it will return whatever counter is currently at. Um, this is the meteor.is server. Any server code that you needed would run there. Um, and then this is the HTML. It should look a little bit, uh, it should look pretty similar to what we've been doing with Angular uh, with the interpolation. Um, the, uh, it's not a typo. If you see the, the curly braces, and then the little angle, I believe that that's, I, I haven't looked too much at how to write HTML for Meteor, but I believe that's just initializing the template. And when you actually click the button, uh, that click handl handler will be called and increment the counter and will be reflected uh, on the client immediately. Um, and then deploying it. So there are two ways of deploying a Meteor app. You can either run Meteor, which is a, just launches up to your local host. That's not too different than what we've been doing with Node or uh, running some NPM script. Um, but what's really cool is that you can say Meteor deploy the name of a site dot Meteor dot com and it will like within three minutes be hosted there uh, for the most part. So I did that. I just deployed it to FSA demo dot Meteor dot com and it was there. So I think that was pretty cool. Um, it's definitely less 
painful than figuring out how to deploy to Heroku. Um, but uh, it's, it just it adds, uh, it lessens the complexity. Um, so these are some helpful resources uh, to help you get started with Meteor. Thanks. Questions? Yeah. 